were you when you left there? I left Malaysia when I was 16. So th then you moved to England, you go to, uh, I've heard of Bath. Yeah. I don't know why you would go to Bath, but there you were. Well, it's just uh, where my mom got a gig, a job, I guess, doctors call them. Um, <laughs> a medical gig. Yeah. <laughs> There's a hospital there. They were like, come do a gig at this hospital. Uh, and the, the, culturally, the difference is night and day, I guess? Well, I mean, Bath is a very white city, even for England. I mean, Bath is a town for people who find Idaho too ethnic. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and so, yeah, it was a culture shock for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially finding out what the, the name Wang means in, <laughs> in the English-speaking West. Oh, you haven't heard? Uh, <laughs> Well, it means, um, in, in, in Chinese, Wang, we pronounce it Wang. It's very common names, like Smith. And it, it means king. Very elegant. Oh, lovely. It's yes. King, yeah. mm -hmm. um, in America and the UK, it means your, um, your, your dick. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a fall from grace. And I, the way I found this out was I was at school in Bath, and I was just minding my own business, and one of the rugby boys from the year above came over, and he just went, hey, look. Hey, and he sort of gestured down at his crotch. I looked down, and he had his penis sticking out of his zip, and he said, now I'm Phil Wang. Ah. Which, it's ugly. It's just ugly. It's ugly, but it was also educational. And <laughs> that's how I learned, oh, Wang, yeah, we've lost our crown here. <laughs> Hello, apa kabar? And ni hao. I'm Phil Wang. I'm from Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. Uh, now based in the UK. I'm a comedian. And you can watch my stand-up comedy on Netflix. My special is called Philly Philly Wang Wang. You can read my book, Side Splitter, in which I talk about being from Malaysia, being from KK. Um, uh, or you can not do any of those things. It's your life. You do what you like. But I hope you do, and I hope you like it. I wasn't actually born in Sabah. I was born in the UK, but we flew, oh, are, we flew right. back here. So here. I grew up here, yeah. I, I got really into it in my teens. I started watching like stand-up clips on uh, YouTube. Um, I was, at the time, I was at boarding school in Brunei. And the lots of stand-up, I started watching stand-up clips of Russell Peters started being shared around. And I watched other stand-ups on YouTube. And I thought, oh, maybe I, I, I could do this at some point. And then we moved to the UK when I was 16. I went to high school there. And one night, the drama teacher put on a comedy show. And I asked, I, I asked to do five minutes of stand-up. And he was surprised because I wasn't, exact, I wasn't known as a funny person at all. And I went up and I did five minutes one night at the show in school. And a lot of it was stolen jokes. Um, because I didn't really understand the rules of comedy yet. A lot of it was Russell Peters jokes, so I just swapped out Indian with Chinese. And uh, it went okay, like the perform performance went well. I got myself a gig in town, like, a, like an actual adult gig, a non-student gig, and I went okay. And then there's another uh, gig at school. And then I started university at Cambridge University, where it has, which has a lot of comedy, and I just did lots of it there, and they went from there, really. I think some, sometimes, I mean, not, not so much in, in comedy because, you know, it's, it's part of the artistic community and the creative community has always been um, more sort of open-minded and accepting than other groups. Um, if there ever has been any prejudice, it's been pretty sort of pretty mild prejudice, really. Um, people assuming I'm not uh, British. A lot of people have assumed I was uh, American because, you know, international school, international students sort of pick up this kind of American accent. Um, but uh, from time to time, there's a r slightly racist comment from the audience. But I remember, I, I, remember I, I, got up on, I got up on stage once in London. This was when I was just starting out, and the guy saw me. And before I said anything, he said, oh, num one, number 69, please. Because uh, Chinese takeaways all have numbers in the UK, okay. and yeah, and so you combine like a sex joke with a and with a racist Chinese joke together. So I guess my message would be: uh, comedy is for everyone, even if you're from Sabah. <laughs> um, I mean, my memories are of being very hot, um, and but mainly of food. 
um, laksa and uh, <laughs> laksa chakbetiao, <laughs> watan ho. Still all my favorite, my, still my favorite dishes, you know, still my favorite food. Um, um, memories of like playing in rivers, going to Tuaran, where my father's from, eating Tuaran me in Tuaran. <laughs> uh, yeah, being on the beaches, you know, swimming, a lot of swimming, going to school, Simon Fung, Maktam National, all the Chinese festivals, cleaning my grandparents' graves, Chinese New Year, Hari Raya, Deepavali, um, open houses. Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, I, I know Jason Leong. Do you know Jason Leong? He's a KL, he's from KL. He used to be a doctor and now he's a stand-up comedian. Yeah, he's got special on Netflix. He's, um, he's done very well here. And of course, Harith Iskandar, who I've messaged. You know, I, I don't, I've not met him personally, but um, I know him online. And Harith has actually, Harith was the first comedian I ever saw. I was thinking of The Simpsons, you know, it's not, it's not strictly a comedian, but The Simpsons, growing up here, watching The Simpsons here, that informed a lot of my sense of humor. And I think informed the sense of humor for most of my generation. Uh, no, I, th I think you need to be good at comedy. <laughs> I think you need to be uh, funny. I think you need to be able to be funny. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be able to survive great humiliations, because when yeah, when a show goes badly, there's there's no humiliation like it. And every time you get on stage, you're basically entering a casino yeah. where your dignity is at stake. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. you get better and better at playing the game, but there you still you're still never guaranteed not to die on stage. And so I think that what the moment that is often said makes a comedian is the first time they die on stage. If they come back, then they're a comedian. If they don't come back, then they were never meant to do it. Yeah. White and Chinese. Those are my races, fundamentally. White and Chinese. Phil and Wang. White and Chinese. I'm the most powerful race on Earth. <laughs> I've got the big ones, baby. <laughs> Smush them together. I'm white and Chinese. I mean, people have tried to tell me that I'm a minority. I'm like, I'm both majorities, b I'm white and Chinese. Yeah. You can't touch me. I'm Pepsi and Coke. I've got full market share. They sell Wang everywhere. I'm white and Chinese, man. I'm everywhere. You can't run from me. I'm around every corner. <laughs> Hello, ni hao. <laughs> I'm alien and predator. <laughs> I'm white and Chinese. I'm future-proof, baby. Completely future-proof. No matter what happens over the next 50 years, Wang or Phil is fine. <laughs> Probably Wang, though. <laughs> the way things are going. Uh...